Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to be here and share a, a little bit about what the Lord is doing, has been doing in Peru in the last eight years since we arrived in Peru. We work with, uh, with GLO, GLO Peru. In Spanish, it's Redes de Misión, Mission Nets. And we arrived in, in Peru in 2006. Just to tell you a little bit uh, about the, the assemblies work in, in Peru, there are uh, 210 brethren assemblies. And this is where are uh, located the assemblies. And just quickly, so you can see that in the south there are 25 assemblies and in the north part uh, there are 185 more or less assemblies. So you can see the the differences, and that's why we went uh, to establish our Bible Institute in the northern part, you know, to, to, to have access to as many as possible uh, believers. And uh, when we arrived uh, with many expectations, the first uh, difficulty, uh, it was to convince the brethren elders uh, that a Bible Institute is needed and, and it will be good. Uh, so we pass uh, visiting different churches, uh, talking to elders uh, in order that they cannot see us suspiciously. Uh, so it was, was good uh, to get to know them as well and, and to share about the vision we had for, for the, the assemblies in Peru. Uh, we really uh, believe in Bible Institutes in training we believe uh, that uh, the training is something that we need to do all our lives. And our, one of our models was we don't train uh, full-time workers, rather uh, full-time Christians. So that was our model for the work in Peru. Uh, just to, to tell you a little bit also that uh, we had a blessing to to work in the assembly where Bert Elliot uh, worked in Trujillo in, in the north of Peru. He has established 80 churches in Peru. And from those 80 churches, uh, there are uh, 125 more or less churches has been established as well. And we, when we arrived, we asked him a question to Bert Elliot. What will be the, the, the thing that you regret or you will do it differently if you had the chance to, to repeat it again. He, he told us, I would spend more time in training leaders. And he, they, he told us, well, you are here to do that, that job. And it certainly it has been a real uh, challenge and um, pleasure to serve the Lord, trying to train leaders. During these eight last years, we have uh, around 200 students when going through our program. Uh, not all of them has fin have finished the course, but we have this amount of, of students. Uh, we, we do uh, one month uh, in January, a module, another in July, and another in October. And at the beginning to get uh, the assemblies to know the Bible Institute, we moved the whole Bible Institute to different parts of Peru, in the jungle and in, in the mountains. So we took our library, a small library, and the teachers, and so it was good. But we, our wives discouraged us afterwards. <laughs> uh, so we, we work with a team of six families now, and it has been a great uh, joy for us to work together with our different gifts of administration and teaching and evangelism. Uh, I don't know if you heard about Micah Tuttle. He's a great evangelist. And so the Lord has been using our team. Uh, so with this, we also um, wanted to be a blessing for the local church. So in, in Trujillo, we start night classes, so we have around 15 students every Monday for three hours studying our program. Uh, uh, but in, in, the la in the last 
few years, we realized that we couldn't reach uh, many students. So we started to pray, and I have to, to confess something that one of the hindrances we had was some uh, people in those areas that they wouldn't be very encouraging for, for having a Bible Institute. So we didn't push it too hard. But in recently, uh, last year, uh, the demanding for Bible teaching, teaching was so great that uh, we decided, you know, we are serving God, and the needs are there, and we just, we, we go for it. And in Cajamarca, in the Andes, uh, we started our, our, uh, our modules, and there were like 38 students coming for, for the first time. They were so proud that we have our Bible Institute, they say, you know. And since then, there are like, uh, faithfully, there are coming around 25 students, uh, once a month for a weekend, they come to study God's word. But also in Lima, in the capital, uh, uh, there, there have been there several assemblies that unfortunately there were bad leaders that were uh, uh, misleading uh, God's people. But thankfully, uh, they were put out of the, of the church by their own assemblies, and now these churches are asking for help. And last month, uh, uh, but actually after the IBCM Hispano Conference in, in Buenos Aires, the people who, the Peruvians who went there, they came back very excited and said, we need to have more fellowship uh, among our assemblies in Lima. So they started to meet once a month to pray. And, I went once to that prayer meeting with all the assemblies in, in Lima. They, say, they told us, we need your help in teaching. And we thought, again, you know, the Bible Institute should start also here. And, and for our great surprise, uh, there, there are now, four, uh, I'll show you later the, 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 the picture, uh, around 40 students in Lima. This is something unbelievable for, for us. And we praise the Lord for, 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 for this. And, and if we record counting the three, in the three cities, there are 80 students who are studying God's word in, in, three, in our three Bible institutes. So we praise God for that. Um, some, we believe that we need national Bible teachers with good Bible training. So we have been uh, supporting uh, one brother who is studying, uh, he's finishing uh, his Bible studies, and he will be uh, uh, a good uh, Bible teacher for our Bible Institute. And we are also very, very happy for him. He lives in Lima. Uh, but we still need more Bible teachers that, that can keep, keep on and keep up a good Bible st standard for, for the assemblies. Um, here, just to show you, uh, this is our publicity. This is in Cajamarca. Rich Hartnett, there he's teaching. And this is in Lima the capital, Jim Fleming was there recently visiting us. Uh, and this is in Trujillo, where we live, uh, with Peter Grover there. One of the things to finish, uh, in, in these eight years that we have restarted, we, uh, the Lord taught us that we need to be flexible in our programs and our teaching in the ways we do. We cannot put our own agenda and methods uh, or our own ways. We, we believe that we need to serve our brothers and sisters and we accommodate to their uh, needs and possibilities of time. Uh, they cannot leave you know, their churches for their jobs or for, because they are uh, uh, busy and taking care of the assemblies. They cannot leave uh, the churches for, for so long. So we need to accommodate our time and uh, 
according to their needs. And, and the Lord has been blessing this ministry, and we praise God for that. We ask you your prayers for us as we seek to do God's will in blessing uh, and strengthening uh, our assemblies in Peru. Thank you very much. Clarify for me, uh, Luis, just one point. Did I, did I understand you to say that when you went out eight years ago, your thought had been to establish one Bible institute in one place? Was that, that what you intended? Yes, well, at the beginning we have different ideas and our idea was to do something similar uh, that what we have in, in, in Scotland, in, in Motherwell, Tisley College, mm -hmm. a program of nine months with also uh, have a practical work. But as soon as we arrived, people couldn't leave their jobs, their churches, as I just said. So we said, what about in holidays? So we started to do it in, in January, who is free for most of the people, students and everything. And uh, so we started to do by, by modules. And one thing I, I also, I would like to add, at the beginning, uh, there were elders and full-time workers, our students. So they, most of them graduated already. Um, most of them, our elders have only primary school. Uh, but uh, recently we are receiving students with secondary and even university. And they are asking harder questions now in the Bible classes, so we need to to improve and to make it more So that profound. in a number of ways the Lord has led you in the way of almost developing a national strategy, yes. uh, much bigger, I presume, than you had imagined at the time. Yes, this is amazing because we usually would have 20 students per module, and now we are having 80 <laughs> students as we have decentralized the Bible Institute. Uh, and do you, two or three people, you're, you're speaking about six families, do you go to the three centers and presumably to more? Should that develop? Yes, uh, we, we go, uh, one family may go, uh, the one teacher will go one month to one place, the other to the other one. We just wrote. We have to do it like that, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you very much. I appreciate okay. that. Thanks, okay, uh, thank you.